Adam Stack Maker A30 Pro got it way sitting way up here, making a custom baseboard for it with a layout grid and some custom feet that I can stack as for risers. And if you've seen any of my other videos on lasers, you know I like to do this. So what are these riser things? Well, here's the feet. And if I want to rise the laser, raise the laser, I can stack that on there. If I want to go higher, I can stack that on there. If I want to go higher, I can stack that on there. So if you're using a rotary or you have a large project and you still want to use your layout grid, everything will always be in the same place. Everything will always line up with that layout grid and you can just raise and lower your laser as needed. So my original intent was to design some for this. Well, I got to looking at it and I grabbed the ones that I designed for the uh, longer Ray 5 laser. They work on here so I don't have to reinvent the wheel or block, so, they, so to speak. So these kind of fit together like Legos. And it's, it, I'm sure everybody's familiar with Legos. And there is a slot for the leg. And on the motherboard corner, we have to have something a little custom there because the motherboard almost acts like the fourth leg. So we need to have a little clearance there for it. So what I've done here, I have a piece of uh, half inch MDF. It's 24 by 28 because I had a piece that was 24 by 28 sitting in the corner. Of uh, 24 by 24 would have worked, but this way it'll have a little bit of extra length on the end here. It'll kind of protect the motherboard and etc. And I've rounded over the top edge of this. I put some black rubber baby buggy bumpers on the bottom, otherwise known as cutting board feet, to keep it from sliding around. Although it does slide pretty good on my saw table because it's waxed. So now I'll get to getting this thing mounted. Okay, so how do these work? Well, I need to get kind of uniform here and get things square first. I'm going to make some marks here so I can get some square corners. Get my distance in the same. That'll make sure it sits square on the board. So, as I said, the board's a little bigger than it needs to be, but that's fine. So these legs actually sit in there, and it does raise the laser up by about five millimeters. And then once I get it where I like it, I can zip it down with a few screws. So over here on the motherboard corner is where I have this one with a little bit of a offset thing in it to compensate for the motherboard there. You see this fits with the motherboard sitting on top of that. And once I get one screw in there, I can lift this off and put the rest of them in. So once I get all the corners started, I can just lift this off. Move it out of the way and I can put the rest of my screws in. So then with everything screwed down, I can just set this in here. And what's nice about this is it will be in the same place every time. So if I take this off to uh, do something or to put the risers in or whatever, and I put it back on, it will always be in the same place. So the layout grid that I'm going to be putting in here will always be accurate. Okay, next up is going to be my grid. And I have one laid out here, and we'll get into all that here while this is burning. I did some tests here, because this is a 30 watt laser. I can't be using the... Uh, grid settings I used before run my 5 and 10 watt because I don't want to cut holes in my baseboard. So I did a couple little tests here and I've settled on what I want to use down here. Uh, always run a test on your material first. Don't necessarily go by what I say, run your own tests. So what I need to do next is since I'm engraving right on the spoil board here, I need to set my focus for the board. Right here is the, uh, the grid that I designed that I'm going to be engraving on the spoil board here. Uh, I've got two different line settings here. One will be a darker line than the other. Uh, the lighter line is 5,000 millimeters per minute at 40% power, two passes. The darker line is 3,000 millimeters per minute, 50% power, two passes. 
And then the text is uh, 4,000 millimeters per minute at 40% power using fill. So the advertised work area on this is 400 millimeter by 400 millimeter, and I have designed this to be 400 millimeter by 400 millimeter. I'm going to make sure this is home again. I did frame this. Yeah, we're home. What I found out was on the x-axis, it's actually about 398 millimeter. So it's, it kind of bumps aside a little bit over there, but that's not going to affect the rest of this. On the y-axis, I do have the full 400 millimeter travel. So I have this all set. Total engrave time here is uh, 27 minutes and 9 seconds. So we'll hit start here. And away it goes. I do have my air assist on. And of course I'm not going to video the entire engrave here, but you, I'll leave this running up here so you can kind of get the idea and then we'll come back to it periodically and kind of have a look. Where it looks like it's skipping a spot or skipping a line, it is not. That is going to be a darker engrave uh, for my uh, 50 millimeter grid that is on top of the 10 millimeter grid. These lines are 10 millimeters apart. Okay, now you can see we're starting on the x-axis lines. And again, it will skip every fifth one and it will come back and do the uh, other lines later on. Well, a little something I'm puzzled about and it will not affect the, the use of this grid. But you'll see here, they're 10 millimeters lower than these. And then on this side, they're 10 millimeters higher over there. But that's not what's on the light burn layout. So I don't really know what's going on there. We'll have to see how these x-axis lines come out, if they offset or not. I really don't know why that did that. I'm showing this just to show that not everything works perfect every time for everybody. Wondering why I'm not running that just in one pass and I'm doing each line in two passes. The reason is uh, it reduces the scorching. Even though I have air assist on, with MDF if you run uh, too high a power, you will get uh, some scorching by the lines and I'm trying to avoid that. Okay, we're getting down here to where the uh, last set of line is going to engrave and I'm curious to see This is uh, ones that will be darker. But it's connecting the corners. And my line over here on the x-axis is coming out perfect. I just really have no idea why those one lines offset on the y-axis there. The reason I have this X is to get my center point if I need to use that for some type of layout. And as you'll see when it gets going here, there'll be uh, some circles that'll be engraved in there too. This is where it'll now go back and fill in those other lines. Uh, these will be a little bit darker because I'm using a higher speed and slower par uh, power. Now this will make some circles, the layout for round items, obviously. And next it'll do the text. Okay, I know how my uh, lines got off there on the uh, y-axis when it first started out there. I just noticed when it was doing this text that the cable for the, that runs on the y-axis got between the x-axis gantry and the limit switch. And I quick pulled it out of there before it messed up my text, but that explains that offset. I didn't see that as it was uh, initially engraving. I may up that with a drag chain here in the future. Keep that from happening again. 
I chose to put numbers every uh, 50 millimeters rather than on every 10 millimeter line, uh, which is close enough for what I do. I don't need to have it on every single line. So there's a completed grid. I'll show you here uh, where this cable got caught up in is something to watch for. And as I said, I may be putting a drag chain on here in the near future. So let me uh, move the gantry here a ways and I'll show you where that got caught. If you look right here, that's where your limit switch is. Well, what had happened was this cable had got wound up and got in between there and it's about 10 millimeters and that is what threw this off. So there it is, baseboard, layout grid. Again, these uh, mounts I use, I can stack these here on when we, I get into doing the rotary and there'll be a, a video coming up uh, demonstrating the rotary for this here in the near future, along with some uh, projects. So, the grid, like to get that, there'll be a link in the description, you can download it from our website, no charge. Uh, these here, I will put a link to these, they are also for the longer Ray 5 laser, they work both ways. I was kind of happy that it worked out that way, I didn't have to redesign another riser because I've designed risers for several of the other lasers I have. Uh, it'll be a link in the description for where you can purchase these. If you would like to get the STL files and you already have 3D printer, send me an email and I will send you the STL files. Keep in mind because the tolerances on this are very very close if your 3D printer is not calibrated 100 percent they're going to fit together. I've had uh, people try this where their printers weren't calibrated and say hey they don't fit. Well they do if your printer's calibrated. So something to keep in mind there. So there'll be more projects coming up on this in the very very near future. Adam Stack A30, there'll be a link in the description if you'd like to get one of those. Nice high power laser, excellent architecture. If you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up, always helps the channel. I'm Roger in the shop, thanks for watching, we'll see you on the next one. I'm going to go play with my blocks, I wonder if I could build something out of this. Bye.